Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 6, Lesson 13, Practice Problems Review. Number 1, select all expressions that are equal to 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, it is not 3 times 5, but this is 3 to the 5th. It is also 3 to the 4th times 3, because when you think about 3 to the 4th, it's just 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and then you have that other times 3, which is the same thing as 3 to the 5th. Well, if it's not 3 times 5, it's not 5 times 3, and it's not 5 to the 3rd. 5 to the 3rd is 5 times 5 times 5. Um, so that's definitely not it. Question 2. Noah starts with 0 and then adds the number 5 four times. Diego starts with 1 and then multiplies the number uh, 5 four times. For each expression, decide whether it's equal to Noah's result, Diego's result, or neither. Let's look at Noah. He started with 0 and adds the number 5 four times. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Another way to write that is 20. If we look then at Diego, Diego starts with 1 and then multiplies the number 5 four times. So he's multiplying the number 5 four times. It's another way of writing 5 to the fourth power. So 4 times 5, that's equal to 20, which is the same thing as what Noah did. 4 plus 5 is actually equal to neither. 4 to the fifth power, that's actually neither as well. And then 5 to the 4th power was Diego. Question 3. Decide whether each equation is true or false and explain how you know. 9 times 9 times 3 equals 3 to the 5th power. Well, for A here, if I break the first 9 into 3 times 3, the second 9 is another 3 times 3, and then we have 3 already. Is that equal to 3 to the 5th? Well, yes, that is. It's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the 5th. So this is, for A, true. And again, just looking at this, the first 9 was broken into 3 times 3. The second 9 we broke into this 3 times 3. And then we had this 3 right here. Five threes that are being multiplied. It is 3 to the 5th. Next, we have 7 plus 7 plus 7 equals 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. My goodness. Well, in B, 7 plus 7 plus 7 is the same thing as 3 times 7, which is 21. Is it equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3? So 7 times 3? You betcha. It is true. Now, 1 7th times 1 7th times 1 7th, does it equal three sevenths. Well, simply no. Um, this is the same thing uh, for the one seventh times one seventh times one seventh as one over 343 is seven times seven times seven is 343. So that's not three sevenths. Four to the first power being the same thing as four times one. Well, four to the first power is four. Does that equal 4 times 1? Well, 4 times 1 is 4, so coincidentally, this time it is true. E, is 6 plus 6 plus 6 equal to 6 to the 3rd? Well, I'm going to write false right away for this, and then I'll explain why here. For E, 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. It's another way of looking at 6 plus 6 plus 6. It's not going to be equal to 6 to the 3rd, because 6 to the 3rd is 6 times 6 times 6, which of course is 216. So, no, they're not equal. That is definitely false. Let's move on to the next page. Now, what is the area of a square in question 4 with side lengths 3 fifths units? Well, that's going to be 3 fifths times 3 fifths, which is the same thing as 
3 fifths squared, by the way. But either way, 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 5 is 25. So we have 25 square units. In B, what is the side length of a square with an area of 1 16th square units? Well, that one's a little more complicated now, isn't it? Basically, um, side squared is equal to our area. As we saw, 3 fifths squared was equal to our area of 9 20 fifths in the previous question. And so if side squared is equal to our area, and we have our area given, our side squared is equal to 1 16th. Now something kind of cool happens here, at least I think it's cool. If you took the square root of both sides here, you would get your side length is equal to, now a cool thing with fractions is you can take the square root of the top and the bottom. And so you end up with 1 fourth. And of course, logically, as you think about that, 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 16th. Now C, what is the volume of a cube with edge lengths 2 thirds? Well, volume is equal to side to the third power, or side times side times side. And so this would be 2 thirds to the third power. And again, like our square root in the previous b, you can just take 2 to the third over 3 to the third here and get 8 27ths. So 8 27ths cubic units is your volume here. And then lastly in D, what is the edge length? Well, this time, if volume is still side cubed, and it is, we're going to take the cube root, which is a little 3 there, of 27 over the cube root of 64. Now, what times what times what is 27? That's going to be 3. What times what times what is 64? That's going to be 4. So we have 3 fourths units. In our next question, select all the expressions that represent the area of the shaded rectangle. Now we're looking for that shaded rectangle now. And so this rectangle um, to the left here on the white box is representing uh, 3C. I would think the entire rectangle here is 10 times 3, so 30. So the shaded rectangle looks like it's going to be 30 minus 3C. Let's see what we can come up with here. 3 times 10 minus C. That would get us there, because if you take 3 and multiply it by 10, that's our 30, right? Minus the 3 times the C. So, yeah, A does work. I'll tell you right now, B does not. It's going to be 10 minus C, not C minus 10. C does not work because we're not taking 10 times the C minus 3. They're on different sides. D doesn't work for the same reason as C. E does work. I kind of showed you how to get that answer there earlier. And if the answer is E, it's certainly not F. Question 6. A ticket in a movie theater cost $8.50. One night, the theater had $29,886 thousand dollars in ticket sales. Yikes. All right. So one, estimate how many tickets the theater sold. Now remember, estimations are meant to be kind of simple, right? So if I round 29,886 to 30,000 and I say divide that 850 or, or take the 850 and make it about $10, again, just meant to be easy. This is about 3,000 tickets. If you move that decimal place over one spot to the left mentally. So it's about 3,000 tickets. Now, how many were sold is a different question, right? Because now I need to take 29,886 and actually divide it by $8.50. When you do that, you get 3,516 tickets. A lot of people. Seven, a fence is being built around a rectangular garden that is eight and a half feet by six and a third feet. 
Fencing comes in panels. Each panel is two-thirds of a foot wide. How many panels are needed? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, we're looking now, if we draw ourselves a nice little picture here, at a rectangular garden that's eight and a half feet by six and a third feet. And we're going to need um, to figure out how many panels. Well, this isn't going to be an area question. This is going to be a perimeter question. And so if I look and say, well, my perimeter here is eight and a half plus eight and a half plus six and a third plus six and a third. Combining the eight and a half with the eight and a half, that's 17. Six and a third plus six and a third is 12 and two thirds. So my total perimeter here is n uh, not 19, hello. How about 29 and two thirds feet for the perimeter? Once you have your perimeter then, you can divide that 29 and two thirds by two thirds. Well, kind of a flashback here, but as you do that, you need to get improper fractions. So 29 times 3 is 87, and add that to the 2 when you get 89 thirds divided by 2 thirds. And now if you keep change and multiply by the reciprocal, that cross simplifies to 1 and 1 and you're left with 89 halves. That simplifies to be 44 and a half, and so you actually need 45 whole panels because you're not going to be able to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get half a panel, or Menards, or any home improvement place for that matter. That is it uh, for this practice problems review. Good luck.